Um, uh, okay. You attack him. Special move. She has none. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, whatever. I think we got this thing. Oh, he's totally going to kill Ika. She is dead, man. All right. 205 damage. Oh, God. <laughs>Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand One Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we're hopping into a Dreamcast classic known as Skies of Arcadia. And if you experience dizzy spells or epileptic seizures, you might want to contact a doctor after watching this video. Hopefully nobody out there gets seizures, including me, and we can just enjoy this JRPG classic. Uh, a little bit together today. So, the age of exploration has dawned upon the world of Arcadia. Brave adventurers set sail across the vast skies in search of treasures untold. And where there is treasure, there will be air pirates. Uh, this reminds me of uh, Tailspin, the uh, Disney cartoon from the 90s with uh, Baloo. And he would uh, fly around in a plane and have to avoid air pirates. So we got a bit of air piracy, a bit of air piracy is taken up residents in the world, I guess. Um, now this is a pretty cool game. It features pirates, treasures, uh, you know, combat on land and in the air. There's uh, color-based magic systems, which I'll hopefully talk about a little bit today. All sorts of other stuff. I've never played this game before. I'm experiencing it today for the first time with you guys. And uh, I'm looking forward to sort of getting a taste for what this game is actually like. So here's the opening uh, montage showing us all the colorful characters we'll encounter, the different ships we'll see, the different kings we will uh, serenade, and the weird guys who can summon fire that stand beside the kings. I don't know, princesses, maybe there'll be flying carpets, Aladdin style. I know one of the magical powers is that you can pull a moon down on somebody and crush them with a moon. Egypt is also in it, and also the Disney castle in the sky. Also an ice planet with a purple moon. I don't know what this place is. I don't know, there's just so much. There you go, there's your, your uh, airships and stuff. This guy has a robot hand. There's a parrot, apparently, and this guy, and these guys, and these guys, and these guys, and these guys. Anyone else? This thing is also in it, and also ships. Anyway, without further ado, I don't know what I'm looking at there. It's just like, it's uh, it's all Greek to me. It's just a bunch of random characters and stuff. I mean, obviously, they're gonna be characters from the game and stuff, but having never played it, I'm like, oh wow, look, it's random people i mean i don't know it has no significance for me anyway without further ado let's go ahead and start a new game all right and here we are in the mystical world of the blue moon we've got atmospheric smoke passing over the moon and a sinister looking ship sailing through the sky i guess we'll give the story a little bit of a chance but uh, i'm always torn with games that have excessive amounts of cutscenes and stuff because you know, I don't want to make like a four hour video. Nobody's going to watch that. So I kind of have to be selective with how much cutscene we actually allow. But let's let's let at least the opening cutscene play out. Um, we'll give it we'll give it a, a couple minutes here to make its point. If it hasn't if it hasn't wrapped up in a few minutes, we'll we'll shut her down. But Alfonso says, I finally found her. Admiral Alfonso, her ships in range of our cannons. Excellent. Prepare to fire concussion shells on my command, but avoid hitting her ship directly. We need her alive so we can, in quotes, question her. Fire! And here come the cannons. Oh, you think she's going to live after that? Yeah. I see a lot of precision when you fire, like, rocket missiles at uh, an adversary. Yeah, you're definitely not going to accidentally kill her. Um, her ship is just sort of limping along now. This is totally like the opening of uh, Star Wars, by the way. Like, the big Death Star comes and takes Princess Leia's ship, captures her. They've streamlined it, though. She has no crew, so there's nobody else. There's no uh, droids to mess things up and flee looking for Luke Skywalker's help. She's sleeping. Those were sleepy time rockets. That, or she just decided to take a nap at the most inopportune time. The girl has been knocked unconscious, but she's unharmed. He's, like, flicking his hair. Ha ha ha, the Empress will be very pleased with me. I'm surely sure to be rewarded handsomely. Uh, what? Where did that come from? An explosion! The lower hull's been hit! Someone's attacking us! Oh, look at him. He's so sad. 
Who would dare attack a vessel of the Imperial Armada? My bet is pirates. Also, that suit does not look very comfortable when it comes to manning the controls of a ship. There's a small ship hiding on, on uh, port side. It's pirates! No! Oh yeah, pirates here to save the day, just like always. <laughs> pirates are the good guys, right? Pirates are always, those, those rapscallions, they're always up to no good, but they always have their hearts in the right place. They're just a big old gang of Han Solos. Yeah, let's board them! You scallywags! We're gonna board you and... I don't know, I don't know why, why are we going on the enemy ship? Let's just get the girl and get out of here. Maybe we have a point to make. Oh man, that is a high jump! I can't believe that guy didn't just fall to his death. Air pirate scum! Don't you know that we're Valuan Imperial soldiers? Of course I know. That's why we attacked your ship. You guys have the best stuff. Oh, I'm not here to save the girl at all. I'm just here for my own selfish uh, desires. Uh, I'm the Blue Rogues, and I'm going to be relieving you of your valuables. Um, attacking us by yourself, you're either incredibly brave or incredibly stupid. I'm a little bit of both, buddy. But also, I'm less stupid than you think. Because I've also brought this other girl with me! She's carrying a piece of wood! Uh, oh no, she's got a weapon. It's a weapon. <laughs> it's, uh, the graphics are just glitching out a little. I'm a blue rogue like Vice, and we're robbing you. In case you haven't figured out, this is a robbery. Oh, she's got a boomerang. You dare mock the Valuan Empire, blah blah blah. Alright, now for the Final Fantasy style combat. Which I've heard is uh, pretty respectable in this game. Uh, I don't want to use the word good yet. We're gonna we're gonna judge for ourselves whether we think it's good, but uh, I've heard it's solid. So we have some options here. Let's let's go through this. We can uh, attack. We can guard. We can item. We can run, or we can S move. Don't know what that is. We can magic, or we can focus. We can just take some time to concentrate. I'm gonna attack, and I will attack soldier. And she is going to attack Soldier. We'll see how this goes. Boomerang Tom, Biatches! And... Oh! We straight up killed him. They're gonna send his him home in a body bag. There's gonna be nothing less to, less, blah, nothing left of him to send to his uh, uh, grieving family. Oh, Boomerang sliced to the, to the neck. And then he turns around and attacks me. But I very quickly and heroically, critically hit him right in the face, and he dies. All right, we've killed two soldiers. Hopefully there's no consequences for this. Hopefully murder is uh, smiled upon in the world of air piracy. Uh, all right, let's see what kind of leveling we got going on here. We got one experience. Now it's one of those games that has like really low numbers. I find in Japanese RPGs, either they have really, really, really low numbers or really, really high numbers. Like for killing an enemy, you get either one experience or 10,000 experience. It's never like 50. It's always like one extreme or the other uh, in Japanese games. I don't know why. I don't know why that is. I mean, now, of course, in the comments, people are going to point out all sorts of games where it is in the middle. So I, I might also just be making stuff up. There's also that. Uh, don't take what I say as absolute truth, or you will be disappointed in life, let me tell you. Um, anyway, uh, these guys... Oh, that guy just got killed by his own guy. I think you miscounted. I see only four of you. Oh, no, wait. It's my dad. My dad showed up. Isn't that embarrassing when you're trying to conduct a bit of light air piracy and your dad shows up? Um, anyway, dialogue, Let's backstory, go. whatever. Let's just finish robbing this place and... Here's my bet. We're going to accidentally save that girl from the opening cutscene. We're not here to save her, but we accident we might do so accidentally. Uh, you received a sacred crystal. Cool. I don't know what that does, but I bet it's good. It's good for me and bad for the guys who are not me. Uh, all right, so this is kind of cool. He gets to explore like a 3D environment, 3D ship. I'm sure like in the later levels, there's more going on. This... This is obviously the tutorial level. This is just sort of where it's a mix of opening cutscene slash sort of on rails fights and stuff like that. But they're also doing huge expositional dumps in terms of uh, character backstories and stuff. Uh, he's from a distinguished family, an admiral of the Imperial, um, Imperial Armada. Jeez, I can't talk today. 
Has anyone ever done this in the history of combat? Have, have two people ever showed up on a battlefield and they're like, my name is Jerry. I come from like a farmer's family. And the other guy's like, my name is Steve. And like the, the, the character, do people in real combat actually give their backstory to one another? I don't think so. I'm willing to say it's a trope, but you know, you can't imagine two soldiers in World War II like exchanging uh, long bouts of dialogue and expositional backstory before they shoot at each other. I'm pretty sure people just shoot at each other. I think that's how war actually goes. Anyway. More guys are coming to kill us, so... Let's deal with that, and then we'll go back to, uh... You know, our, our ponderings about the, uh... The workings of combat. Um, alright. I'm just gonna go with the, the good old attack option. Why are these guys not in order? Oh, I can rotate the camera, that's cool. But look, when I select different guards... I'm just pressing the same button, but it's like bouncing all, all around. That's kind of weird. Anyway, we'll go with guard one over there. And there he is. All right. We're going to double team this guy. Oh, look, they're surrounding me. Interesting. So I guess... Oh, these guys, are, we're like one-shotting them now. So I guess there's actually quite a bit of tactics here. I was assuming this was just straight up like Final Fantasy where my guys stand in a line and their guys stand in line, and we take turns running across to the other line, like, punching them in the face. But I guess there's, like, positional... Like, let's try S move. Um, oh, it's a super move. I gotcha. And I don't have the super move ability for it. Okay, whatever. We'll continue attacking. But yeah, look, like, guys move around the battlefield. There's, like, positional stuff to take into account. That's actually kind of cool. Kind of interesting, actually. Oh, man, those guys, those guys drop like nothing. My guys are very uh, accomplished pirates. Does not seem very difficult to kill Imperial Guards. I don't think they train those guys very well. I don't think they train them very well. And we're getting... So here's the different colored magics. As I understand it, Green is like healing and poison, red is like fire, purple is something else, blue is ice, yellow I forget, and silver is like rejuvenating or something. And so basically the way this, the magic system in the game works is you select a color and I think you can build up mana in that kind of color and then you can unleash certain abilities and stuff using that color of magic. And you can switch your colors in combat. Now again, I've never played this game, so that is all just me reciting what I've heard about the game. The actual mechanics of it may change a little when we uh, maybe get down to the nitty gritty of trying to use the magic. Anyway, bad guy is running away with girl. And our mission is to chase bad guy. Oh, I've slaughtered many a bad guy in my day, bro. And I have no qualms about slaughtering you too. Hey look, a treasure chest. You received magic droplet two. In quotations what is this this is a save spot we do not have a, a memory card so that's fine we're just not gonna save we're, we're gonna play things really risque uh, playing playing a game like this without a save without save function is I guess I guess this is the kind of game like if you didn't have a memory card back in the day you would have you would have to tell your parents that you need one You'd be like mom dad I know you think I just ask for things. I know you think all kids just, just beg for whatever, but I legit need a memory card or this game cannot be played. Unless you want to beat this in one sitting, but being as how this is an RPG and a JRPG at that, I'm willing to bet there's, you know, tens and twenties of hours that you'd have to play this back to back in order to beat it. Um, something else is happening now. I'm not quite sure what. Oh, the back door of the ship is opening. And your excellency, the sun is up and visibility is good. The preparations for your your escape. Oh, he's running from me. Okay. Um. Oh, what what's happening? Please, your excellency, what are you doing? I cannot tell the empress I lost my ship to the air pirates in a fair fight. I'm going to need a scapegoat, and you'll do quite nicely. Keep my glorious reputation from being tarnished. You can't do this. Ah! Oh, he straight up killed that guy. We should save him and recruit him to our team. Look, look at this guy, this douche. Even in death, he'll serve me well. I can't wait to tell the Empress. 
But Empress, my own vice captain betrayed us and allowed the air pirates on board. I could do not but dispose of the traitor myself. Ah, lying. That's how you climb the corporate ladder, guys. Now that we've taken control of your ship, we'll be taking the girl as well. There's just one more thing I need to do. After seeing you kill an unarmed man in cold blood, I can't allow you to walk away from this. Draw your blade, Alfonso. All right, we're going to get to fight this dude, maybe. Uh, I, get, I bet he's going to actually... No, he's summoning minions. We should tell them what he did to the vice captain. Oh, wait. Those... These do not look human. <laughs> he has some kind of giant bulls. What the what? What is that thing? Man, the land of space piracy is crazy. He's a war beast. I'm going to leave him here, but it seems I found a use for him after all. Trample the pests. So wait. This thing understands... The captain's orders. Does it understand the captain literally just say he was going to leave it here to die? Is this so? This thing should totally, uh, totally, uh, just kill the captain. Then we can recruit a war beast into the air pirates. It'd be awesome. Oh, look at this thing. This thing's going to cause trouble or it will go down incredibly easily. One of those two things is true, is my bet. All right, let's just, I guess, attack. I don't have a good sense of when it would be good to defend. But, oh, he missed. You suck, War Beast. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. This thing takes, like, no damage. Uh, okay, here. Let's let's actually try guarding. And we'll attack only with her. We'll attack him. Give him hell! Aika? Aika? Oh, he counterattacked for way more damage. Thunder of Fury. Good thing I defended. Oh my god. That was me defending. 95 damage. Um, I don't think we can beat this thing. Just do some land a few attacks here. Assess damage. <laughs> He's just thinking about it. Ow, that hurt. Here's a critical strike for you. Okay, that did something. Maybe we can't actually kill this thing. We have 8 of 8. Let's try an S move. Cutlass of Fury. And she'll attack too. So when you build up your magical meter, that is how you unleash like special attacks basically in this game. Oh, here it goes. He's going to Hanukkah him. Oh, he uppercutted him with the sword, man. Oh, man. Didn't really do that much damage. I mean, it did like, it was like double the damage of a normal attack, which is sort of nice. Assess damage. He's like, huh. That hurt. That did not feel so good. Getting slapped around with a cutlass turns out to be painful. Oh, counterattacker. Okay, next time we build up enough power, we're going to have her do a special move. Lice. Maybe the special move does like triple the normal uh, amount of damage, something like that. 87 from a critical. Well, there you go. Oh, God! We're on the edge of death here. We need a special move for Ika here. Come on, Ika! You can do... Yo, God, Ika! You're so close to dying. Um, uh, okay. You attack him. Special move! She has none! Oh, no! <laughs> Alright, whatever. I think we got this thing. Oh, he's totally gonna kill Ika. She is dead, man. All right, 205 damage! Oh, God. Okay, so she's... We lost somebody. Somebody died in the process of defeating this epic beast. Oh, he burst into flames! That's pretty cool. So when you kill beasts in this game, they just explode. That wasn't so bad. He's like, yeah, that was easy. And he's like, let's get out of here, Ika. And you see him walk off camera and her... She's just lying there dead. <laughs> Doesn't move. Doesn't even notice that she died. Holy jeez, I leveled up three levels. Oh my god. Is that a, that's a lot, right? I'm quicker now. Um, and I ranked up. Sweet. And Aika is still dead. <laughs> she gets nothing from that. Holy shit. Okay. Well, I don't know what to, I don't know if that was good or not. I guess I got four levels of experience and she got nothing because she died. There's more than meets the eye. Well, Vice, the Blue Rogues, you will rue this day. You will rue it, I say! Rue it!
Rue's an interesting word. We shall meet again. Off he goes in his tailspin inspired airship, flying away. Who's the bad guy in Tailspin? Blue was the like captain. Then there was Rebecca, who was like the the woman who ran the shipping agency. Tailspin was basically the story of Air FedEx. And there were pirates constantly getting in the way. But like who are the bad guys? I totally forget. Uh, what kind of commander sacrifices his own men? Hey, she's alive again. I'm shocked. Also, I like how she's like, what kind of commander sacrifices her own men? And then you look at my character and his eyes are like darting around because he totally let her die in the fight. Yeah, that, that guy, he's a monster. That's all right. Anyway, we save this random girl who seems to be dressed like a princess. That looks like Zelda, to be honest. We got our we cut ourselves a Zelda. Hopefully she has lots of money to reimburse us. My home? Hello? Uh, hello? Where where am I? What's going on? Is this how the Zelda princess wakes up? Okay, let's skip all this. All this pointless backstory. I want to get to more air piracy. I want to see like what kind of abilities we can unlock, actually. Well, they're looking at her like they've never seen a Zelda princess before. Is she going to be impressed or horrified that she's in some crappy pirate ship? She looks happy to be saved. Where am I? You're aboard the ship, the Albatross. I'm Vice. Don't worry, there aren't any troops. Blah, blah, blah. Thank you. We're the Blue Rogues. I'm a girl, too. Hello. Giggle, laugh. My name is Fina. All right. Um, let's make her feel bad about herself. That's a strange name. Really? Oh, I'm... Sorry. Yeah, you, you better be. That was really smooth, Vice. Don't you know how to treat a lady? Oh, apparently, by the way, if you constantly mess up dialogue options, you'll get nicknames in this game. So you can have nicknames like Vice, you know, the Noble or something like that. But you can also get like Vice the Ninny if you're just incompetent in dialogue. So dialogue choices actually kind of matter. Kind of funny. Uh, I have a question. What exactly is an air pirate? I like how their eyes blink, like nobody's ever asked them this before. Uh, you don't even know what air pirates are? I'm sorry, it's my first time traveling. Basically, air pirates are sailors that attack other ships and steal their cargo. We're criminals. Aha, you don't have to worry about us. We're blue rogues. The air pirates are divided into two factions, blue rogues and black pirates. The black pirates will attack anything in the sky, especially merchant vessels and unarmed ships. However, we blue rogues only take cargo from armed ships, especially Imperial Armada. Ah, we arrive from the rich to keep the gold, but we use the gold to save people that need our help. We're basically the good guys. You could call us Robin Hood. Um, I'm sure these guys are into some like really shady stuff, though. You know, they're probably into like human trafficking and stuff, too. Like, yeah, they're telling her that they're the good guys. But bad guys never admit they're bad guys. Anyway, off, uh, off we run to more adventure, I guess. And she's she's trying to figure out if she's saved or if she's now a hostage. Basically, she's like, am I, am, am I in danger? Are these guys going to try and kill me? What are we looking for here? We've got very lighthearted pirate music going on as we wander around the ship here. Um, another bed. Okay, hold on. What am I looking for? How about a ladder? That That's probably a way to get up. Get on the ladder. All right, we're going to try and go up and find our dad or the captain or whomever we're supposed to be talking to. All right. Hello, sir. You look like you're in charge. Uh, oh, there you are, Vice. You finally decided to join us in the bridge. Well, we're heading back to Pirate Isle. Pirate Isle, southeast of here. Just head south first. It's just past the Valley of Islands. Head south through the Valley of Islands. Aye, aye. Let's get moving then. Full speed to head to Pirate Island. Oh, here we go. We actually get to sail the ship now. Um, how do I steer this thing? Just to be safe, exactly how do I steer this thing? Never thought you'd ask. Pay close attention. Use the analog stick. You move forward or backward, then turn left or right. Control the ship by using the R and L triggers. Okay. Uh, sure. I'll I'll figure it out. 
All right, and to sailing we go. Off we go. I think we're going south. Kind of interesting, actually. Um, I don't know if you can go vertical or not. Yeah, forward and backwards on the analog stick just sort of um, make you go forwards and backwards. So really, you're in a 2D world, but it sort of looks like you're sailing through the sky, so it looks like you can go in three dimensions. I actually appreciate them keeping you on a 2D plane, though. I keep things simpler. What the hell are these things? Pyrie. Oh, man, what the hell? What just happened? Um, oh, no, she died again. Wait. <laughs> Was I supposed to heal her between combat? Oh, no, we, we might be dead. Oh, no, he's died, too. Do we have items to, like, heal ourselves? What's happening? Do I get an attack? Do I get, do I get a chance to fight here? Oh, counterattack, bitch. Oh, shit, we did no damage. Oh, no, we're in a lot of trouble. Okay, item. Uh, what does this do? Use it on me. Does it heal me? Yes, all right. So luckily, the, the item we chose healed us. Oh, man. I didn't, A, I thought, I assumed she would have healed up between combat, A. And B, uh, I didn't even get a chance to do anything before they did an area of, of attack effect. Uh, area of effect attack. I don't know. I don't even know how to say it. They attacked us both at once before I had a chance to do anything. It was ridiculous. Let's kill this thing. Magic? Wait, why does it get an attack first? Oh, no. It caused me to miss or something like that. I don't know. Double miss. Oh, we're in so much trouble. We're in so much trouble. Maybe the fact that the girl is dead is like secretly good for the guy because he's gonna get like double the experience. Hey, it ran away. You jerk. Well, we'll kill that thing instead. All right. Now we're oh, he just poked me. <laughs> Didn't even look like a hateful attack. He just sort of like poked me. Uh, he's like, hey, get out of here, you. He just wants me to stop bugging him. Man, we do like no damage to this thing. A 60 to us. Okay, time for a special move. Cutlass Fury! Let's make this thing pay, whatever it is. There we go. 19! What? That's so crappy. We do 15 damage normally. The special attack was a colossal waste. Wow, four more... That whole cutscene, the whole attack and cutscene, and we do four more damage. There's like nothing. All right, let's just. Oh my god, it's still alive! There's 60 more hit points gone. Okay, we're gonna definitely have to figure out how to heal the girl after we win this fight here. Yay! So Success! He holds his swords weird. Have you guys noticed that? He's not holding them by the handle, he's holding them by the hilt. Lod. Um, all right. Well, we've gained some magic. How do we heal, though? Uh, hold on. We bridge. Does this bring us into the character mode? All right. Now, as first person mode. Okay, she has one hit point. How do we heal her? Uh, created from the dew, restores one magical hit point. Okay, that's not what we want. Hey, there a way to... Maybe, oh, maybe we can go and just have a nap in the beds. And that will heal us. Usually in video games, sleeping or eating are the things that heal you. Your, <laughs> your character either needs to take a little nap or eat a giant turkey. And they're usually feeling right as rain. Let's see here. Go into room. There's an empty bed, right? Here we go. No, we can't use it. Uh-oh. Okay, hold on. Let's try... I don't think... No, this was storage. Oh, wait. Maybe there's, like, healing potions or something in here. Let's see what we got. Anything. These barrels are stuffed with things. Ammunition... Okay, there's nothing. Oh, man. So, we just have to get lucky and make it to the pirate island to heal? That can't be right. 
I swear we're probably missing something, but I'm not smart enough to figure out what it is. So I guess we're just going to hope we make it to the pirate island. There's like a hotel or something that will let us heal. Anything over here? Nothing. All right. Well, let's uh, let me let me set sail again. Let's get headed to Pirate Island. If we encounter one more thing, we might literally be dead. This might be a very short let's play today, guys. Oh, I see Pirate Island. We just barely have enough steam to get there. Help us, Pirate Island! Oh, we just like totally crashed in. <laughs> All right, what do we got here, Pirate Island? Are there any healers in town? How? What's what's the medical, Medicare situation like on Pirate Island? You guys have Blue Cross. These flying ships are actually pretty cool, though. So I wonder what the backstory of this entire world is. Like, why are we sailing in the skies rather than water? Kind of seems like just a gimmick for the game, but I mean, it's cool. It's neat. Also, when I first saw the title of this game, Skies of Arcadia, for some reason, I thought it would have something to do with like arcade games, you know, like Arcadia. I mean, I guess it doesn't matter that it doesn't, but I kind of thought, oh, I wonder if it's going to be like some kind of retro themed RPG, which would be kind of cool, actually. Uh, but no, it's pirate themed, so I don't know where Arcadia fits in there, but whatever. Uh, Pirate Island looks kind of tiny and crappy, to be honest. Ooh, look at this. Are these all pirate mamas? Are they the, mo the mothers of pirates? Those little pirates in training? All right, little pirate babies. Not quite ready for full-on piracy. This is, like, literally the homestead of, like, two families. You smiling at them. You go on by. Is this skippable? Whoa! Wait a second. Is there a secret underground pirate island? I guess we'll find out. All right, the ship's coming in. It's docking. Slowly. The man, they're really milking this cutscene. There's no way to skip this. Buttons do nothing. They're like, behold the majesty of the Dreamcast and all its glory, all its 3D glory. I wonder for anyone who played this back in the day when this came out, did this blow your mind when this came out? You're like, oh shit, it's like going into the island. Whoa, the 3D effects. I mean, I guess to put in context, the dream when the Dreamcast came out, like the Super Nintendo was still in recent memory, right? Like it wasn't that long ago. So I guess compared to like Super Nintendo games, this would be crazy. Like compared to Star Fox, this is like an unbelievable achievement in graphical fidelity. I guess you could say that about basically any 3D game, though. Compared to Star Fox, I would like to see reviews for modern games start that way from now on. Compared to Star Fox, this game is awesome. Compared to Star Fox, this game may not be very good, but it's great. You know. Anyway, here's all the uh, here's all the the loot, the booty that we've pirated away. Um, and Fina is just sort of watching on. We still don't know who she is, but we're just okay with letting her into the inner sanctum of all piracy, I guess. Pirates are a very trusting crew, a very trusting group, from everything I know about pirates. And uh, this is the underground port inside of Pirate Island. And the outside of the island looks like a quiet, peaceful village. Inside is where all the headquarters... Ah! It did look like a quiet, peaceful village. Even a tavern. Ooh, we're finding that. All right, what do we got going on here? Somebody's calling our name. It's Johnny Pirate. Come to my office immediately and bring that girl with you. When Johnny Pirate wants to see you, you jump. Better hurry, you know my dad gets when we're late. Okay, so that was his dad, I guess. Um, in any event. Uh, let's go find out what he wants. Uh, where was he? He was over here, I think. No. Yes. Oh, is this the tavern? Hey, we found the tavern. Sorry, dad. Gotta go drink. Drink first, talk later. 
Um, cheers! Look at these rapscallions up to no good. They have giant hands, by the way. Like, the proportions of their bodies are just all kinds of bizarre. Timis the Gunner. Uh, he's talking about how he likes to drink. We have, like, attractive female pirate. Uh, Mabel the Raider. You should be sitting here drinking La Quia with the rest of us. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Pleasure is full. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. All right. So she is put off, I guess, by the tavern. I don't know exactly, but it appears to be a really good kind of tasty drink. Everyone seems to be drinking so fervently. It must be delicious. Uh, if you want to share a bottle of Merlequai with us, it's made from Laquat berries and Moonstones. It's just a juice, but it tastes great. Just a juice, right? Wink, wink, wink. It's booze. It's booze. Maybe we actually can uh, have a drink with her. Let's see. Be a rogue. No, she wants nothing to do with us. All right. Anyway, let's go find my dad. I'm so lost. Where am I even? Oh, here we go. We found uh, not not quite stairs, more of just an inclined platform. Here we go. Pretty sure this is where we need to go. Hello. Oh, it's an armory. Hey, will you sell me stuff? Zach, the weapons merchant. Come right in. This is a weapons and armor shop. Guy looks like so skeevy. I'm going to have to charge you, even if you're a fellow air pirate. All right, tell me stuff, Zach, my boy. Okay, pirate cutlass. I think this would increase my attack. Uh, this is a leather crescent light robe. I don't know what this is. Valiant uniform. Hey, we can dress up like the guys we're killing. Interesting. Meditation ring, Morocco shell. Okay, I don't know if we want any of that stuff. I guess we'll we'll see what's going on. We definitely we still need to heal though. Like she has one hit point. <laughs> what's going on? Um okay, where where is my dad here? Oh, we found a ladder. Okay. He couldn't have just come talk to us, making us go through all of this just to find him. Okay, we're clearly now at the top. This must be his office. Nope. This guy's sleeping, though. Can we mug him? Uh, weapons are set aside here in case of emergency. Okay. So... Okay, over here must be where my dad is. Ah, uh, here we go. Vice and IQ reporting for duty, and we brought Fina like you requested. What do you want with her, sir? Hmm, you're a little late. I'll let it slide this time. Come on over. Young lady, I'm dying. The captain of the Blue Rogues, and these are a few questions I want to ask you. Uh, of course. I've been sailing for a very long time, but I've never come across anyone wearing clothes like yours. What country are you from? Um, I can defend her or sit quiet. I'm gonna, I want to know too, though. Um... Captain Dine, you worry too much. Fina's just normal girl. How do we know? Why are you vouching for her? Silence, Ika. I am the captain here. It's my duty to protect the safety of my family and my crew. Um, is this girl's danger of any sort to you or any of my men? I cannot let her live. But, but... Well, I mean, I don't think she's a danger necessarily, but I am curious about where she's from. It's your turn to speak. Fina? I cannot say... Why is that? Is it because we are air pirates? Don't you trust us? No, that has nothing to do with it. Thank you with all my heart for saving my life. But I cannot tell you any living soul about the purpose of my quest, even if it means sacrificing my own life. Well, that doesn't sound ominous at all. I have no intention of endangering any of your lives. If you believe anything that I say, please leave this. Hmm. All right, then. Looks like I lost this one. I understand your dilemma, and you can see in your eyes that you are true to your word. Although we're air pirates, we also have a strong sense of honor, as it turns apparently. <laughs> you do not need to divulge details of your quest. Understand that you have my trust. Thank you All so right. much. Well, we're trusting. We're such a kindly bunch of pirates. Yeah. Yay! We're the best! Yeah, Dad! Yeah! All right. We're excused. Don't be late for dinner. Okay, what do, we, what do pirates do in their time off, I wonder? 
I would love to find a way to heal uh, Ika. Let's actually go and see if we can sleep in the hammocks to heal her. So here is the bed. See if we can... Uh, most sailors sleep in hammocks. Okay. Hello. I'm so confused. How do we heal her? Watch. You can take her shorts off. That's inappropriate. I have no idea how to heal up my characters. This is a little bit of a problem. Hello, Luke the Raider. Captain Dine said the girl, I mean Fina, permitted to wander freely through the island, so I unlocked the door. Also, there are two treasure chests in this underground port containing emergency supplies. You might want to look for them. Well, thanks, kid. I will! Let's uh, finish exploring Pirate Island first. We gotta find a mission, at least. We can't, we can't quit today without finding, like, some kind of pirate mission. I'll stop by my house. What's wrong? I just wanted to freshen up. I'll catch up with you guys. Go recover some hit points while you're gone. Will ya? <laughs> I don't want to take into combat again with one hit point left. So I guess now we're on top of Pirate Island. Uh, Barbara. It's every air pirate's dream to be a swashbuckler, but you have to do more than sail to become one. You have to live as one in both your actions and your words. Only the true swashbucklers can become great leaders. Okay, thanks, Barbara. All right, we found a guy who wants to give us pointers on hand-to-hand -hand combat. Uh, let's see what he says. You can teach me some combat tactics. Okay, well, the first thing you need to learn um, how to use effectively in battle is your party's spirit. You cannot think of spirit as your entire party's fighting energy. You use it up whenever you cast spells or super moves. Or you can think of spirit as your entire party's fighting energy. Everyone in your group uses the same pool of spirit points. That means you can have someone like, let's say, Aika, for instance, focus. And she would gain spirit points for the rest of the party. And then you can use vice to use those. Okay, blah, blah, blah. I get it. Um, thanks for the tips, bro. How do you heal? That's one tip I would like to figure out. These kids want to play hide-and-seek with me, but I have no time for games. As I'm literally playing a game. Okay, here's a dude alone on a really tall island. Hey, Vice, it's nice to be home again, huh? Sometimes when we're out sailing for a long time, I start to miss this old place. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Alright. Here's some treasure, though. Magic droplet in quotes two. Um, This is just like, oh, I was gonna say... You can just fall to your death here, but you can't walk off the edge. That's nice of them. Uh, can we rotate the camera? Yes, we can. So the trigger button seems to rotate the camera. That's a nice little feature. Not all early uh, early 3D games knew what to do with the camera. So it's nice to play one where they actually kind of thought about it a little bit. Uh, now we're just climbing a ladder that just goes up to nowhere. Or another hidden island, as it seems. Wow, this is a long climb. This is a long climb, jeez. And we made it. And there's nothing up here, is there? Oh my god, there's absolutely nothing. Oh, except a treasure chest. I will take it. Ooh, the Sacri Crystals. Those heal you, right? Uh, okay, we have a way of healing Ika. That's actually quite significant. Back down we go through the clouds. And look how high we are. That's actually insane. Still climbing down. Taking our time. Man, think of the person who had to climb this ladder to put those emergency supplies up there. And then we just show up and take them. Not even a real emergency, we're just kind of lazy. We're like, we're, it's not an emergency, we're just like, I want those supplies. All right, is there anything else to explore? Uh, there's a couple of houses over here I haven't burst into. Hello? This just seems to be somebody's domicile. Is there anyone home, though? Oh, yeah. Don't mind me. Sorry for the home invasion. Talk to me. Tell me things. After returning from a long voyage, there's nothing quite like collapsing in your own bed. Okay, so do it. You won't do it. Um, now I'm outside again. Okay. Um, normally you can just sleep or something. 
Here's a garden. I can't read what that says. It seems to be in Japanese. Also, the texture is a very high resolution, so I couldn't probably read it even if uh, I spoke Japanese. This is... I don't know what's going on in here. Screw you, dude. Okay, I guess we got our supplies, and we pretty much talked to everyone in town. So, I guess let's peace out. Let's, uh, let's just go back to our pirate ship. Wait, wasn't there a door here? Oh, it's hidden. Interesting. All right, is it dinner time yet? Now listen up, Vice. There are times when something other than brute force or sharpness of mind is demanded. Sometimes you have to have a firm grasp of the entire situation. That's when you need to learn to be a swashbuckler. People will notice how you behave in various situations. You begin to earn a reputation. That's why you need to try and be uh, as adventuresome as possible without forgetting leadership responsibilities. Okay. How do I get to the next part of the game here? Hooray, we're home! You know, there really isn't anything else quite like the feeling of when you get home. Thanks, man. I found a random pole to climb. Don't know where it goes, but he's a pretty good climber. Actually, very impressive. The upper body strength required to do this is quite significant. Oh, it just leads back here. Oh, what the heck? I just found a hidden passage. Okay. Maybe this will lead me somewhere good. Mm, we seem to be back underground. Oh, here's that treasure chest that I saw. A moonberry. All right, cool. We're, we're finding all the secrets in this game somehow. Accidentally. I like how even my guy's getting impatient. Okay. Apparently, when we try to enter our house, then we will... Um, then we will have Ika join us again, so... Um... What is this? I wonder what this handkerchief is for. Oh, I think there's something underneath it. What the? The handkerchief was there to cover this hole in Ika's room. I'm a peeping Tom. Like George McFly. Who's there? Take that, you creep. <laughs> what? Ow, my eye. Vice, what are you doing peeking into my room? You should be ashamed of yourself. I can't believe you inspired me like that. Get out of here. Ika, dude, let's go. We got piracy to do. What are you doing sitting in your room? Uh, brushing your hair with your hand. That ain't cool. Um, okay, so it says go to your house. Which one is my house? Where do I live? Is this my house? No, this can't be. Who is this guy? Hello, it's Granny. Some old grandma pirate. Okay, screw her. Where's my house? Oh, is this my house? I'm kind of stupid. I never went into this building. This definitely seems like it might be my house. Wow, I just walked by this like five times. All right, this this looks uh, like stories being progressed. All right, we found my mom. She welcomes us back. I introduce her to Fina. Where are you, Aika? Ah, here comes Aika. All right, we're ready to go. Thanks, Mom. I'm gonna skip the rest of this scene. All right, we are now ready to roll. Uh, I think now we can just go back and see our dad. Look, the time has changed. The sky, it's, it's now sort of sunsetting time, which is actually quite cool. Actually, it looks rather beautiful. I do say so myself. Um, anyway, let's go back into secret pirate area. Why are mom and dad living in separate buildings? Dad lives underground and mom lives in the house. Are they divorced? Did mom get the house in the settlement? Kind of seems that way. We never did learn the secret of the children playing hide and seek, but... I kind of don't care. I'm sure it was some silly secret. Apparently this bookshelf... You can just totally move. So there's something I, f I found when I was trying to figure out how you get Ika to come back to you. Oh no, damn it. Didn't mean to do that. Uh, open the bookshelf. Open it. There you go. Uh, I want to go down this ladder here and see where this goes. Probably give us more treasures. And as a pirate, I am in the business. It's my business to collect treasures. 
Surely dad wouldn't mind if I robbed them. He'd be proud of me, right? I'm pirating a pirate. What do we got down here? Anything good? Oh, here we go. Treasure chest time. You received 150 gold. We just straight up robbed our father. It's like uh, going into your, your dad's wallet when he's not looking and literally taking money. That money didn't belong to us. It's behind a secret bookshelf in my dad's office. Belonged to him, clearly. I am a terrible son. All right, I'm gonna say that Ika and Fina did it. Because all three of them are with me right now, even though I'm the guy, Vice is the guy running around. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Oh, wait. Okay, wait, what are we supposed to do now? Okay, apparently I wasn't even supposed to come back down here. I thought I thought his dialogue say, said come back for dinner. I'm supposed to climb a big ladder. I wonder, so... Obviously, I'm kind of skipping through the dialogue a little quickly. And if I'm missing things that the characters are supposed to do, that's fair. But I also kind of wonder how obvious it really is that you need to do some of these random things that you're supposed to be doing. I guess I'm supposed to climb some giant ladder over here. And like, watch the sunset with Fina. But that wasn't entirely obvious to me. I had to look that up, too. So off... We... Go. I can, like, read more of this walkthrough while I'm doing this. I'm just holding up. Climb the big ladder, watch a scene. Fina looks at the moon strangely. You'll see another scene where everyone eats and then sleeps. In the morning, talk to Vice's mother to obtain items, and then to dine to obtain a new color stone for the battle. Exit and take off. All right. All right, everyone's just sitting up here, enjoying the sunset, as folks do. This is what people did before TV and YouTube. Before Let's Plays, people would sit outside and watch the sunset. Would you guys rather be watching a sunset than watching me play this game poorly? I don't know. I like to think I'm more interesting than a sunset, although maybe that's the height of narcissism. The height of hubris to say something like that. Come on, though. Sunsets are just giant gaseous clouds burning in space, reflecting radiation into the atmosphere. I'm way cooler than that, aren't I? I'm Gaming J. I'm almost twice as interesting as a gaseous <laughs> cloud burning in space. Huh? Ah, nerd jokes. I don't know what's happening. There's stars falling from the sky. It's amazing Vice and Ika, but not Fina. A moonstone? Falling from the moon? Ooh. Land on the island over there. I think that's a shrine island. Ooh, I bet we're gonna have to investigate that. I'm calling it. That's our first dungeon. Hey, we're getting treated to a little collage of cabin rustic living, I guess. I don't know. A little vignette of what it's like to live in this little town. These people do not seem like very serious pirates. They just seem like a bunch of kids hanging out. <laughs> like, I would not be intimidated if I met Ika in hand to hand combat. Just saying. All right, now we'll talk to our mom. She gives us items. And then we're supposed to talk to, uh... Who are we supposed to talk to? Dine. Oh, here, take this. It's your share of the loot from yesterday's raid. You received a purple moonstone. All right, sweet. Moonstone has been processed already. You should be able to use it on your weapons. Now you'll be able to change the color of your weapon to purple and give it the power of ice in battle. Wait, purple? Wouldn't blue be... Why isn't blue the ice one? Or white? Purple. Interesting. Easy to change the color of your weapon uh, by using the equip command or pressing the Y button during battles. Alright. Thanks, Dad. Good to know. Good morning, Fina. Did you sleep well? I like how we're just totally letting her into the pirate gang. These guys must have been desperate for a third friend. There's no way you would just let somebody in this fast. Um, you can stay here if you want. Uh, that will be fine. Thank you. Oh, wait, never mind. We're not letting her in. We're totally abandoning her. We have to remember to heal Aika before we go into combat, though. In fact, let's do that right now. Oh, she is healed. Never mind. She's a level one. She has no experience. She died right before we were about to get a ton of experience. I still, I still feel bad for that. But I wonder if it did shift way more experience to my dude, and if I'm, like, actually better off for it. I don't know. 
I guess we'll see. Aika's gonna be pretty weak until she catches up and experience to, uh, the main dude, Vice. Vice. This is an interesting name. Sort of sounds German to me, Vice. Right, where's that pole? Here we go. We're gonna take the pole down. Oh, he actually slides down. You can actually go down faster. Wow. He, like, he didn't slide down ladders or anything, so I just assumed he would not slide down poles. Uh, how do we go? Why is nothing straightforward? I want to leave the island. Why can't I just go to my ship? Ugh, I think I gotta go find the vice captain, it says in this walkthrough. I can't tell if old RPGs were just tedious or if I'm just incredibly impatient these days. I mean, I know I'm impatient. Don't get me wrong. You're watching this. You guys watching this, shaking your heads at me. I, I know I'm impatient. But were old RPGs, like, just definitely more tedious and confusing? Or, like, literally am I supposed to just be savoring this? And I'm just totally not. Because I'm too old and impatient. <laughs> but come on, man. Where... Where are you, bro? You should be at the ship, man. Not dawdling around over here on your freaking island. Where are you? I'm gonna... I'm gonna... Clobber this guy in the head, man, when I find him. Oh, he's, like, way over here. There he is. Way over here. Oh, wait, we're not even taking the ship that's docked. Okay, this makes more sense. If this is the ship we're taking, then it makes more sense. So. I hear you're going to Shrine Island. Pick up Moonstone to get your shrine. You need to sail straight from here. Be careful, there are monsters. One more thing. Not only are there Moonstones in this world, there are things called Moonberries. They contain a lot of power. Eating some, you'll actually get stronger. If you go to your status screen, select Super Moves, you can learn new techniques. Thanks, bro. Depart! There we go. Okay, I was in the wrong ship. I take it back. I take it back. Maybe I'm just not very smart. Although it does feel like a bit of a downgrade and a tease to now have this tiny ship. And we had a nice big one before. Oh, look at that. There's like a ship over there. Can we interact with this ship? Do stuff? Merchant ship. I saw a moonstone hit Shrine Island yesterday. That stone is as good as gone. You'd have to be crazy to go after it. Shrine Island is haunted, you know. Oh, yeah? That's Pirate Island. Where was this shrine? Is this water falling from the sky? I think it is. I actually have no idea where Shrine Island is. Hoping this is the correct way. Kind of cool to be able to, like, sail through the skies like this. Of course, every JRPG has just random encounters where you run into nothing and monsters are there. So we're going to have a little bit of that, obviously. Who's going to be fighting us today? These monsters. All right. Um, let's take out the ghastlings first. Because that uh, shelled enemy... It just takes forever to kill, so we might as well kill these little guys so they stop damaging us. And she does, like, no damage to them. Um, attack this guy. Attack this guy. Kaboom! I got, like, Vice one-shots these guys. He's powerful. Hit point absorb. You stay away from my hit points! 127 damage! Holy! You know what? I just realized Ika's so low level, she might just straight up start getting killed again and thus gaining no experience. The irony, you're so low level, you can't live long enough to get experience to level up. Uh, okay, Vice is going to go for this and she will go for this guy. I mean, you can't do much less damage than 15, so we might as well let Ika attack the shell dude. Whoa. Oh, okay, never mind. Zero. I guess you can do less than 15. 60. Okay, we're loaded up on potions, though, so... Maybe what Aika should start doing is just concentrating. Her attacks are useless. I'm just gonna have her concentrate to build up... 72, holy jeez. To build up a special... I don't know, power or whatever, so that uh, Vice can do more special moves. Like, for instance... He can do the Cutlass Fury, and she can focus. Here comes the pain. The pain trains to Barton the station. 
For an extra five damage, you get to sit through this awesome mini cutscene. Oh no, only three extra damage. It's like almost not even worth my time to use those, uh, those special moves. Like, it's just a waste of everyone's time. I might as well just do some regular attacks. 15. And Ika, you better level off of this. He's just totally useless right now. He's totally useless. Counter attack, bitch! Alright, there we go. This should, hopefully... Nope. Maybe we can get one more counter attack in. Ika! Ika attacks for zero! She does absolutely nothing. Gets counter attack, though! Good! A okay, counter attack. Yeah, whatever, just attack. Kill this thing. Alright, we've successfully slain another shelled creature. Those things are brutal. What are you cheering about, Aika? You were holding the team back. Alright. One experience. Ooh, she leveled up. Oh, and so did Vice, actually. Cool. So, level five and a level two. Um, Sakri was learned. Okay, hold on. Let's go into our characters. Um, I want to use items. Enchanted crystal restores 500 hit points. What does this do? There's a thousand hit points. Okay, well, we'll use this on him. I guess we won't use it on her right now because she doesn't have 500 hit points bit of a waste all right carry on looking for what was it the shrine island or something like that sacred shrine something like that I don't even know if we're going in the right direction all I see are waterfalls um oh another random encounter okay I might start, start skipping some of these battles because uh, we kind of want to see shrine island here Man, she is about to die. She died again! Oh my god. We're not making it to Shrine Island, are we? Oh, Vice keeps missing. This does not bode well for us. He's absorbing hit points from a dead girl. Oh no, he absorbed them from me. Never mind. And once again, Aika lies unconscious as the battle ends around her. Oh, man. Pretty sure this is not the way to go. Oh. Oh. Wait. There it is. There's the Shred Island. On the other side of this mist wall. And you know what? I forgot to heal Aika. So how about she defends? Guards? Oh, no, it's going for her, and she's dead. <laughs> well, at least she's good for absorbing one hit. Man, what are you supposed to do when you have one character who's, like, so weak? Ridiculous. I guess you gotta waste a healing potion on her. These shelled enemies suck, man. They take so many rounds to kill. I like being able to one-shot enemies. Maybe I should use ice magic or something. Maybe I could freeze that thing. So I should give that a shot, actually. I'm being stupid by not playing around with the magic. Okay, the so Shrine Island is over there. We just got to get around this uh, wall of mist. Oh, wait. Let's go ahead and heal Ika. Items... Here we go. All right, Aika, you're back in the game. Don't fuck it up. Technically, she has more hit points than uh, our main dude. I'm less worried about him. Oh. These random encounters actually kind of are annoying when you're trying to go somewhere. They, like, really interfere with, you know, what you're trying to do. I, I actually am not a huge fan of this random encounter system. I like being able to, like, see the enemies, and, like, it'd be okay, like, in Mario RPG, there's random enemies walking around. When you bump into them, you go into a fight, but if you want to avoid them, you can just sort of run around them. So, 
I feel like that's a much better system than what they have with sort of the classic random encounter system. Uh, let's go to magic. Um, what did I just do? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I guess we need to, like, use an item or something in order to unlock ice powers. That guy definitely doesn't have any at the moment. And she only does two damage. I guess that's better than the zero that she was doing before. Counterattack me, tentacled creature! Oh, there's the zero. There's that zero! Oh my god, 108. You bastard. Why are these things so hard? I probably have a terrible tactic. Terrible strategic choice to fight them is just straight, fight them straight up. Just tank the damage. It's the lazy man's path to victory. If she could do like four damage, it'd be really appreciated. Another zero! Four would have been nice. Oh, he missed! Alright, now you're dead, sucker. Critical strike! 59 damage! Why wasn't that the first hit? That almost could have one-shotted that thing. That hey, she finally got experience. For once, she wasn't passed out dead at the end of combat. Uh, she leveled up! Oh, she's getting to level 3. She's finally slowly catching up. Let's see if we can do anything with their uh, magic here. Oh, okay, so she has Alpha Storm. Spins her boomerang, summoning a vortex of flames. Okay. Now, how about Vice? Can he learn magic? Summons burst of flames. Oh, here we go. He can learn another move. Takes a defensive stance, countering all physical attacks for a full turn. Well, that sounds boring. Whatever, I guess we'll take it. Alright, our peeps are upgraded. Sort of. And we want to go... It was over here somewhere, right? That island. There it is! Alright, we found it. We found our way through the clouds and mist. To Shrine Island. Where the action is. Uh, hold on. Back. Back it up. Back it up. There we go. <laughs> I don't know how to how to look vertically, so uh, there probably is a way. But all right, here we go. This looks like a dungeon if ever I saw one. Over there, look at the size of that hole. That's what she said. <laughs> the moonstone must have caused that. It's huge waters flowing in the shrine. The old world island was a sacred place. These ruins must be some sort of temple. All right, blah blah blah. Let's go investigate. Look how gung-ho and happy these guys are. They're just so excited to get into the action. They don't care about whose remains they desecrate. Oh man, another long walk here. They really like elongated ladders and walks in this game. Like they really like to draw out, you know, you getting from A to B. Right now we're in some kind of like hidden temple here. I'm anticipating random encounters. Water is flowing in. This is just great. The place is flooded. Look, the moonstone is at the bottom. Hmm. How are we going to get it? The moonstone must be huge. How do you plan on getting it? Uh, how about we find a way to drain the water? That'll be the way to do it. Uh, there's still one problem. How are you supposed to drain all that water? Hey, Vice, look over there. There's a door over there. If we can find a way to open it, we can drain the water. All right. Plan A in motion. So the secret now will be a little bit of light puzzle solving. Open this door. And hopefully encounter as few ghosts as possible. They did say this place is haunted by ghosts. What happens if you fall down? Oh, you can't. This game is like, look, like they do not let you fall into water where you where you will die. I feel like some games would just let you die and learn from it. Like if you're stupid enough to go into water after one of the characters said they couldn't swim, you deserve that death. Oh, here we go. All right, let's see what kind of monsters we're fighting in the sacred temple. 
My guess is the exact same kind of monsters we were just fighting on the, uh, the, the ship that we were on. Oh, there's one new type. There's like a snake. Uh, super move. I could do counter strike. Do that. He will, uh, attack. Not that guy. See how much her attacks do to, uh... Oh yeah, there you go! Try and get through this! Oh! 20... Okay, so she can actually kill the snakes. That's good to know. 92 damage! Why do these things do so much damage? Oh, she iced it, though. Uh, one snake down? Wait, why is it going for her? Come for me, snake mans! Oh, she got put to sleep! Uh-oh. That's no good. Oh no, 67 damage! She's at half health! I need to use some, uh... I need to use some health here. Item... Crystal... Use it on me. For her. We will attack the snake here dude. Aha! I am healed! Do your worst. Attack! Ooh, it missed. So I guess you have some percentage of dodging attacks here. Oh, critical hit! Yeah, that's how you do it, Ika. Ah, she's learning. She's become less use less useless. Why did my r guy run over there? Oh, he's doing an attack. And Ika's getting getting owned from all directions here. Super move time. The useless cutlass fury, I guess. And she will heal herself. Let's keep her in combat this time. We need her to gain experience and stuff. Doesn't help to have her constantly die. Cutlass Fury! Cutlass Fury! Oh, oh, there we go! 46 damage, finally! We're doing more damage to these Just things. Ah, oh, I am healed! Do your worst. Oh, he just poked me. Alright, uh, I will attack him. And super move Alpha Storm. Let's Alpha Storm this guy. Oh, here we go! Alpha Storm Boomerang! Kaboom! If this doesn't kill it, I don't know what's going on. Oh my god! Holy crap, that is a super effective attack against these things. Okay, Vice. You suck against these things. We needed Ika the whole time. Ika, it's all about you, man. It's crazy. Oh, 58 damage. Why are my dudes suddenly so much more effective against these, uh, whatchamacallits? These floating snail creatures. Wow. All right, well, I guess, I guess our, our characters are slowly improving. Uh, oh, Ike even leveled up. Okay, Ike is caught up. She's a level four and Vice is level five. Oh, I'm impressed. I didn't think she would actually catch up. She's learning at a geometric rate like Skynet. She's going to become self-aware and launch uh, nukes at Russia, hoping the Russian counterattack takes out her enemies in America. Scary thoughts. Scary sobering thought about, you know, the future of Ike. Um, I don't know what's going on here. Where are we? Like, what is this thing? No idea. Can we rotate? We can't rotate the camera. Kind of locked into this view. Nothing over here. Why? This thing's like emanating a sound. Uh, what's happening now? What did I just do? Oh, uh, the temple is coursing with power. Is that a good thing? Is a good thing happening now? What's happening? Seems to be sinking. There's something, I don't know. Is it sinking? Did good things happen? Okay. I don't know what that was all about, but there's a treasure chest over here. And a pirate never leaves a treasure chest. Two sacred cr crystals, we will take those. Okay, messing with that little uh, device seems to have extended this bridge, which we will cross. I thought we wanted to go deeper into the temple, but apparently we're running away from it. Really far away from it. 
Like, really far. And, oh, there's our boat. Wait, what? Wait, what happened? What? Just happened. How are we back at the entrance? How did we go up a level and end up back where we came from? I'm a little confused. All right, let's go back inside and see what we got going on. See what's happening in this them here old temple. Um, okay, nothing. Hey, we opened a door or something. Wait, what is this? What is this? What is this? Oh, can we light these things? Okay. Oh, no enemies are attacking us. Maybe we have to do something with lighting those like candles or something. I guess we'll see. It's kind of cool how the 3D overworld just perfectly merges into this uh, like zoomed in combat world. Like if you look, the uh, like little torch we lit is like light lit up in the background there. So it's like the fact that this game is all in 3D, I think, uh, makes it possible to sort of um, like make the overworld be reflected in this sort of combat, uh, you know, view. Anyway, um, OK, I'm just going to have her focus. Oh, man, that was a ranged attack. I didn't know his sword could do that. I want Ika here to do her flame attack and just kill all the monsters. Basically what we're going to go for here. Um, he will attack this thing and she will super, she will alpha storm this one here. Get ready to eat the pain. Kaboom. Oh, she just literally roasted all of them. All right. The tar the snake target is dead. Hopefully he finds the next closest thing and kills it. Man, he can't even kill one. She almost single-handedly killed two. He can't even kill one. Uh, it turns out Vice, is, Vice has become quite useless. <laughs> Look, he can't even kill that one either. They're both on the edge of death. He can't do anything. I don't know, just do whatever you want, dude, because here comes the real hero of the show. Ika here is going to... Oh. She would have killed both if uh, that dude hadn't uh, done anything. Out the storm! <laughs> that snail is like, I just came out to feed! And they get like obliterated in a supernova. <laughs> it's just an animal, Ika. It doesn't understand right from wrong. It thought we were food. See, she's totally a cyborg. She's definitely become self aware. This is dangerous for everyone involved. All right. So I think we're in the business of lighting up these torches. I think that's what we decided last time. Let's see if we can find a couple more torches. Here's another one. Fuck, random encounter. I, I don't mind the fights. I just hate the fact that it comes up so randomly and you have no control over whether you want to skip a fight. Like you're obligated to get into all these fights. Ooh, a new monster though, at least. All right, you kill that thing. Um, you might as well kill a thing. You're not useless, Ika. Despite what Vice might have told you. Oh man, but that's a lot of damage. Actually, no, it's not. Oh, but she's asleep. That's not good for us. Ooh. Okay, but I Vice can one-shot those things. Laser! Oh, we gotta kill that thing. We got to kill that thing. All right. You kill that, and you alpha storm that thing. All right, here we go. 29 damage. Vice, you suck. This is like our only power move that we have. Kaboom! Roast everything. 127 damage. That's what you expect from an attack. Oh, God. She's about to die, isn't she? Oh, man, but she countered that. Ika is carrying the team. Where did this come from? Oh, man. Stay alive, Ika. You stay alive. Don't die on me. Um, okay, you use this on Ika. That's all you're good for. And she's just going to continue to alpha storm these things. 
The Vice's only job now is to help keep Ika alive. And let her uh, magic do the rest. You know what I realized? We never went back to the merchant in town and bought anything. Maybe he had better weapons and stuff that Vice could have equipped. To make him not so useless after all. Oh! Just poke jabs in the side with a tentacle. Okay, I think we can just uh, attack this thing down now. Oh, no we can't. Not with moves like that we can't. Is it dead? Alright, we killed it. Well done, huzzah! He's like all proud of himself, smiling. You got nothing to be proud of, Vice. You're dead weight in this fight. First Ika was dead weight, now you're dead weight. And we both leveled up. That's awesome. We're getting more powerful as the moments go on. Hold on, let's check to see if we can upgrade anything. Nothing. Do you have more super moves? No, not. Uh, nothing. Oops. Where's his super moves? Nothing. All right, we need more moon berries. Which are moon berries are awesome because they give you super moves. All right, we lit that one. All right, that one is lit. Okay, we have them all lit. More random battles against random monsters. I wish we could start with four so that she could just straight up do one of her attacks right off the bat. I so badly want to start with an alpha storm. But I can't. So, I don't know. We're both just going to focus. Do a lot of concentrating. Look at this pyre thingy. What is a pyre? Oh, he alpha stormed us. What a jerk. I'm concentrating very hard! About to get lasered. Oh, he jabbed Vice right in the rib cage. Alright. Vice, do your thing. But more importantly, you do your thing. Here we go. Back off! Cool! Supernova to the face! Wait, why did that guy take zero damage? Oh, maybe he took zero damage because he's, uh, he's like a fire dude. Hmm, interesting. Alright, well, we killed that thing, so that's good. I guess we have to just attack that thing. Whatever it is. It looks like a kind of a ghost or Kirby or something from, like, Mario. I mean, I know Kirby isn't from Mario, but you know what I mean. It looks like sort of like a ghost house ghost, or it could be, like, Kirby, something from Kirby. Let me attack this guy. Miss, miss. How do we hit this thing? Oh, 66 damage. Are you joking? Oh, there we go. He's dead. We iced a ghost. Yeah, that was super sweet. All right. Now the real question. What do we do next in this dungeon? Oh, she ranked up. Good for her. Okay. There's a couple of things not lit over there, and I see a door. So I think that's what we have to do. Wait, why is this one not lit? Okay, lit, lit. Lit, lit. Okay, we need to figure out how to get over there. So, somewhere... Oh, look at this. Where am I? There's like a whole underbelly of this uh, shrine here. Oh, more fights. Oh, what is that thing? It's a windfish. From uh, Link's Awakening. A Grouter. Okay, you attack... No, let's both attack the Grouter. Ooh. Hey, you attacked the wrong guy, dude. Oh, wait, now you attacked the right guy? I don't know what's going on. The Panica. Oh, is he making... He's making Vice panic. Vice is, like, caught in a web of his own doubts. His own self-doubts. Oh, Ika. Hey, Vice is, like, hitting a guy over there. 
Oh, she's taking more damage. Okay, she has more health than Vice, so... We can afford to take a few hits. But can they afford... An Alpha Storm? I hope they cannot. Kaboom! Wow, it's still alive. Oh no, we didn't Alpha Storm any of the other little guys. Hmm. Vice just seems to be doing his own thing. I think when you... Oh god. I think when they panic, they just start attacking randomly. Oh, but he missed. Alright, Vice is in a lot of trouble. Vice actually might die this time. I see a reversal of fortunes where Vice is the one who does not make it out of this combat. Um, use a crystal on yourself. You use. I, I, I think S move stands for special move, but I like to think it stands for sweet moves! She's gonna use a sweet move on this guy here. Kaboom! Come on, damage the things next to it! Nothing? I could have just attacked it, I guess. The Alpha Storm is just so much more stylish. Aha! I'm healed! Nice try, floating snails. You'll have to get your kicks killing somebody else. Oh, I poked him right in the butt. All right, she's just going from Alpha Storm to Alpha Storm. Hmm, her alpha storms are getting less effective, though. All right, some poking and prodding later, and we killed them. Yeah! yeah! Victory! All right, carrying on with our quest to get to the other side of the temple here. Kind of interesting here. I don't know what's going on. Do we have to walk down the ladder? I don't know. It's Interesting here. So I, I'm completely lost as to where we actually came in originally. I don't quite understand what level we started on in this temple. Oh, God. Honestly, these fights are becoming quite tedious. Like, maybe if you're a fan of Final Fantasy and stuff, you enjoy these, like, random fights. But it's getting a little tedious to constantly just be interrupted and have to fight these, like, random creatures. Because the fights aren't even that hard. Like, I know what I'm doing every time. Just, you know. Is what it is, I guess. I mean, I guess, you know, for people who enjoy Final Fantasy, I mean, this is what it's all about. Um, I never got into the Final Fantasy series too much myself, and I suppose this is why. It was just sort of like, yeah. You know, it's not necessarily my style of doing things. Are we alpha storm these guys? There we go. That there we fried a bunch of them all at once. Oh, she killed three at once. Vice is just standing there, <laughs> all his hairs burned off because <laughs> he was in the middle of that. Uh, no, he's fine. Good job, Ika. Oh, she she totally caught up to Vice. Wow, I'm actually very impressed. Oh, there's a treasure chest over here. Oh, no, there isn't. Never mind, I lied. Oh! We just burst open a door that... Like, flooding the place. Good thing we got out of the way of that. Just in time, I guess. Oh, maybe you don't even have to light those candles, those torches or whatever. Thought maybe you needed to, but... I guess not? Okay, we got to get down one more level and finish draining the pool. So that we can get this magic stone or whatever we're supposed to get here. Alright, well I know we're still in the first dungeon and all that jazz, but this has become a quite a long video and I've actually cut a lot of stuff out where I've sort of been sitting around playing, backtracking and stuff. And I think for our purposes, we, we get the idea behind um, behind this game. I mean, certainly we've all but scratched the surface of this game. I mean, there's definitely a lot more going on here um, than what we've seen here today. Uh, but we have to call it quits at some point here. And as I say, um, you know, the video is starting to get quite long. 
So Skies of Arcadia here is a game for the Dreamcast. It is considered like one of the best games on the Dreamcast. And so I think especially, especially if you like JRPG games, if you like sort of tactical role playing games, um, if you're a fan of these style of games, I definitely feel like this is a well done game. Like it does have quite a bit of charm and character to it. Um, there's some interesting stuff going on with the spells, even though we didn't really explore it too much today. Uh, but from what I told you earlier in the video, what I've read, there's sort of different colors and they each sort of have different themes of what they do. Um, and, you know, it's it's interesting how there's this group uh, special move pool that you can all use. So it's like you really do have to think about what character is going to do what in combat. Um, the one main thing I dislike about the game, which is not really a downside of this game specifically, but a lot of JRPGs do this, is the fact that when you're just running around the overworld, sometimes you'll randomly encounter bad guys and be pulled into combat. Um, I'm not a huge fan of that because sometimes I don't want to go into combat. I'm trying to do something in the level. I'd prefer to be able to just run past enemies and get to my destination. And if I mess up and bump into an enemy and then he pulls me into combat, you know, that's my own fault and I can, I can accept those consequences. But when it just happens totally randomly and there's nothing, like right there, there's nothing I could do to avoid that combat. I kind of feel like, yeah, not a huge fan of that one mechanic, but... Uh, Anyway, um, what do you guys think of Skies of Arcadia here? Um, I've given you my thoughts, but do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Do you think that this is a game that you must play before you die? Or do you think that this is uh, just sort of a niche game uh, for people of particular persuasions? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, whatever you thought of my little uh, let's play here today of Skies of Arcadia, hopefully you enjoyed yourself. Hopefully you found it a little interesting, a little fun. If you did, don't forget to like the video and all that jazz. And I will be back soon with another game from the book, A Thousand One Video Games you Must Play Before You Die. So until then, my friends, you'll take care of yourselves. And from the sky pirate known as Gaming J, peace. Oh, I poked him right in the butt.